Greetings, beloved. I'm Dr. Felicia LeBoy, lead pastor and life coach here at the historic First United Methodist Church in downtown Elgin, Illinois. I greet you in that name that is above every name, the name of the only one worthy of our praise, the name of the one who flung the stars into space, the one who loves us all more than we can imagine. I greet you in the name, the matchless name of Jesus Christ. And I welcome you to this service. I want to invite all of us this morning not to be observants. Being in praise and worship is not a spectator sport, but it is a time for involvement and engagement. So if you feel like clapping your hands or patting your feet, then I invite you to do that. This morning, we have several visitors with us here if you, uh, in the sanctuary. I want to acknowledge um, Kat Howerton, who is here this morning to work with our choir. Um, also, uh, I see a good friend of mine, uh, Tom Greco, who is from uh, St. John's United Methodist Church in Oak Park. But this morning, won't you wait, those of you who are here, won't you wave to the folks around you, let them know how glad you are that they are here this morning. If you are part of our extended family, visiting with us by, radio and online know that we greet you this morning as well. Before Cindy makes our announcements, I'm going to take a little pastoral privilege if you all don't mind. First of all, it's not often that I am surprised. Uh, and so from the bottom of Adrian and, and my heart, we want to thank you for acknowledging our work amongst you last week. That was a completely uh, that was completely unexpected, and we were both um, overjoyed and just overcome. So I want you to know that when I got home and said to Adrian, this is what happened, that he was as full of as much emotion as I have. We don't consider it robbery that God has sent us here to be with you and to worship with you and to walk alongside you. We consider that an honor and a privilege. So I want you to know from the bottom of our hearts that we thank you for that. Second of all, I want to remind the choir that immediately following worship, uh, please make your way to the choir room so that you can work with Kat this morning. Amen? Amen. Cindy? Good morning. Thank you to Renee Merrill for welcoming everyone to the church this morning. Also, thank you to Cheryl Hayes for sponsoring this week's radio broadcast in honor of Veterans Day and with gratitude for all the veterans in the congregation. Also, thank you to Cheryl Johnson for sponsoring this for Cheryl Johnson for sponsoring this week's coffee and tea for Fellowship Hour, as well as a thank you to Kathy Long for, for providing treats for this morning's Fellowship Hour. Next Sunday, November 13th, we will gather with our small groups to sit together in worship. This is the second Sunday pew switcheroo, and I just like saying that. There will be signs in the sanctuary for each branch, so your group will be easy to find, probably like when you know you go to a wedding. Simply gather, worship, and be in community. There is going to be a Tending to the Harvest Discipleship Worship Service, the UMCNIC Discipleship Task Force, welcomes you to the 2022 conference-wide worship service with Reverend Dr. Mai An Leitran of Garrett Evangelical Theological Seminary on Sunday, November 13th at 4 p.m., either in person or at Journey of Hope United Methodist Church or via live stream. A light reception will follow, immediately follow the in-person worship service. Registration is encouraged. You can visit our website, First UMC Elgin, on the website calendar if you'd like to register. And of course, the most important announcement today is that today is Sue Hansen's birthday. Yay. Happy birthday, Sue. And now, as you all know, we are hosting a Thanksgiving meal here on Thanksgiving Day. So to tell us more about that is Jim Crambeer and Perla Sanchez. Sorry. Okay, good morning. You know, I, I um, feel very fortunate because every time I'm able to stand up, it makes me recognize as I look around here how blessed we really are. I look at the people I've grown up with. I look at the people who watched me grow up. 
And I have nothing but love and compassion for you all. So I'm so, so thankful to be standing here in front of you. Um, Pearl and I came together early this year, well, uh, probably in, in August, August yeah. and started just throwing around the idea of having a Thanksgiving dinner. And it was actually based upon something that one of the, the school district U46 men had been doing with some of his boys called Rise Up Boys. And um, he, he's really effective, but he wanted to have a Thanksgiving dinner for about 100 people. And I kind of looked at him and I thought, my goodness, 100 people in our basement is like having two or three people sitting at the kitchen table, right? And, and so we started throwing around some ideas. And Perla, in her amazing organizational skills over the past two years, when nobody could do anything for our homeless or the needy, went out on her own and raised resources to be able to feed not just Thanksgiving, but Christmas dinners to the homeless around our community. I am overwhelmed by the capacity of this young woman. Um, I am a person, as my wife can assure you, that sees trees in a forest. I don't see a forest ever. I just see the trees. And I'm blown away by the bark and the leaves. Perla, on the other hand, can stand back and see that big picture. And as a consequence, the two of us working together kind of fit like hand in glove. At least that's the feeling I've had all the way through this. The other thing is, Every time we go to ask for assistance or help within our community, people are overly generous. They are so kind and so giving. So as we move forward, we're starting now to look for the resource of people's help and the resource of cash because we do need to cover some of the expenses within, um, within our program. But I will tell you, we have had so much success. This Thanksgiving meal is going to be for not 150, but for 1,000 to 1,500 people. The food is already accumulating. We, we have people who have contributed and they're ready to bring it forward. Um, one of the primary goals, and I think our mission, uh, is, is stated in the title of our flyer, which is, Love Thy Neighbor. We don't just want to feed the homeless because we know that during COVID, there were a lot of people who became single. We know there's a lot of people in our congregation who, you know, they could go see family, but family sometimes many hours on a flight away and you can only go for two or three days and it's easier to stay home. We would love to have all of you and all of your families, not just come and participate, but come and eat dinner. It's going to be pr prepared by a chef that formerly worked at the Palmer House in downtown Chicago and would create 4,000 person meals. He's a remarkable young man. His name is Porfirio uh, Roman. And what a great guy, he is very engaged. So I would like to turn the microphone over to Perla. I would like to say after last week, I am so thankful for all of the people we've met and I'm so thankful and full of gratitude for the organizations and the individuals who are so abundantly giving. So, Perla. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jim. Um, uh, certainly appreciate your words. Every t he speaks life to me every time, and I'm so grateful to be part um, of this wonderful group. Uh, and, you know, First United Methodist Church, um, this is my first time really, you know, coming in, um, you know, to this atmosphere and the, sh the love that I have been personally being uh, given. It's really the love that, you know, we're intending to do with this event, right? To just simply love our neighbors. Um, and so we certainly invite you to come and join us. Um, There's so many opportunities out there for people that want to help, um, that they want to receive the help, uh, and maybe not even just help and simply, you know, just kind of um, mingling with one another, right? Uh, sometimes we can, uh, you know, become strangers in, in this world when we really are just neighbors. We're all brothers and sisters. So we certainly invite you to come and uh, speak to um, our guest, uh, be our guest, uh, be a volunteer. Um, you know, I started my journey uh, by volunteering. So I truly see the power in that. And God has been taking me so many different places by just being obedient 
obedient in that way. And so I'm so grateful and honored to be here. Um, and we certainly invite you to come. There are so many local businesses and restaurants as well, like he mentioned, that are being a part of this. So um, it's really beautiful to see that it's not necessarily an organization or a church or a business. It's, we're just people, right? We're just all uh, God's children. And so uh, we hope that you can come and be a part of this. Um, as you know, she put up that flyer. Um, we're having it all around town. Please spread the word. Invite your friend. Um, you know, we're having uh, different opportunities for people to donate uh, as well. If you want to contribute, you know, five dollars for a meal for a person, um, you know, that's going to be, you know, just an, a, a, such a blessing, right? So this is for everyone. So we really hope that you can uh, join us in this uh, tradition that we're trying to kind of pick back up and just loving on our community as a whole. So, yeah, so it, we do have all of the information on um, FUMC Elgin <laughs> uh, forward slash love thy neighbor. Uh, you'll have all of the information on there. Um, it's going to be on Thanksgiving Day, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, you can come for the whole time. You can come for an hour. You can come and grab a plate to go. Uh, maybe if you have anything, you know, that you know of somebody that may not be able to, you know, get up from bed or have family, take it to them or invite them. So it's just going to be a very uh, wonderful day for us to just kind of spend Thanksgiving together as a community and just love on each other. Can I say one more thing? Yeah, take it away, Jim. I just would like to say one more thing. Along with any kind of support that you can offer, the best support that we're asking for is your prayers. And one of the strongest prayers we ask that you focus on is helping us fix our elevator. It is in dire need of repair, and that will be very difficult, although we can serve people that are handicapped or not able to navigate the stairs upstairs here back in the coffee room, we'd prefer to have everybody downstairs enjoying the meal together. Thank you for your time, and aren't we blessed? Amen. Thanks. So Jim, thank you for reminding me about the announcement that I have with the elevator, but I want to take a little pastoral privilege. It's not only Jim and Perla that serve as sort of this core leadership team. There are other people here that I want to acknowledge as well. Uh, Pastor Rydell is a part of that uh, team. Frank Scheid and um, Stephen Griffith are also people that are meeting. And as uh, Jim and Perla have said, we've had incredible experience. Um, uh, donations and, and just the, the way the community has responded. So, for example, the casino has agreed to cook all the turkeys for us. The, um, a group is going to give us 175 turkeys. Danny's is involved. Raisins is involved. Jules is going to give us all the desserts. And so we really need to have you come here. You know, people want folks to show up at church on Sunday morning, but that doesn't work for a lot of people. We have to be honest about the fact that the church has hurt some people. And it's events like this that bring people into the proximity of Christian people. But we need Christian people there to talk to people and to talk to people and love on them so that when they come at other times, they're not afraid to come into the building. It's not about the fact that we don't find the building intimidating. It's about the fact that some of our neighbors do. And the best thing we can do is to love on people. Amen. I also want to make an announcement about the elevator. Uh, here has been the issue with the elevator. That elevator is very, very old. Oldest elevator is the worldwide people for the elevator. And so they've, tr they've been trying over and over again, different parts and different things like that. Right now we have a, um, this week, there seems to be a solution with the people who made the elevator. And so we will be entering into a contract, hoping that that will provide us the work that we need. Uh, later on in the spring, you'll hear more about the capital campaign. But the truth of the matter is um, that even to get the elevator fixed now is about $9,000. And for people who think this is a small fix, to get the a new elevator is over $100,000. 
And so this is not a simple turn your fingers, make it happen, bam, bam. It's not that at all. And so that's why we're also going through this stewardship campaign. While God is opening up opportunities for us to engage with people, God is also asking us to sacrifice, to be a little bit more generous so that we can step up and do the things that God would have us to do and then see what God will do beyond that. So know that um, through the work of our trustee stewards, and, and I just really want to thank uh, Dwayne Worth for all of his hard work on it is that we uh, seem to have a solution. We solicit your prayers, but the biggest issue is that with the supply issues and how old everything is, it's been hard to get the parts, and when they've gotten them, the parts may not necessarily have worked. We believe we have a solution, uh, and so pray that all of those things will um, occur. We're believing God for great things. Amen? Amen. Yes? I said right there. Oh, uh, Jim said I had to include, I thought I included Rido, but, uh, but that I had to say that I was a part of that. So thank you. Cindy? We, um, as you know, are in the middle of a stewardship campaign and giving is very personal. Um, but we've had a couple of people, we had Janet Cranberry last week and we're asking Cheryl Johnson this week, who are going to be sharing some personal aspects of giving, so turn this over to Cheryl Johnson. Thank you. Ah, let's see. It's been an interesting morning, uh, even though we had an extra hour, kind of. When I was first asked to speak in front of the congregation, um, fear made me say, no, I can't do that. Then a few weeks ago, I thought, this is important, and I need to face my fears and give it a try. Believe me, I was pray praying like crazy before getting up in front of you that first Sunday. You could have seen me sitting over there shaking. But you are all so nice and accepting, and that's not, it's not that scary anymore. Then this past week, I realized that I'm also actually on the radio and online. This terrifying realization made me aware that I need to step up my game. I can't just be a numbers gal, which is really my comfort zone, but I need to reach out more. So this morning I'm reaching out to those of you outside our walls who are not here in person. You are so important to us, as I'm sure the church is to you. Whatever the reason for not being here, we want you to know that we miss you. We know that you can see and hear a lot online, and you can hear what's going on when listening on the radio, but you are missing out on the in-person experience. You are missing the surrounding beauty of our sanctuary. You can't experience the warmth and sunshine coming in through our beautiful stained glass windows. Yes, even in November. You can't feel the resounding sound and vibrations of our glorious organ. You can't get the total picture of Pastor Felicia, Cindy, and Rydell sermon styles. You can't sit in your favorite pew or shake hands and talk to old friends. Nothing beats being here in person. Anyway, know that we are thinking about you and including you in all of our endeavors and hoping that sometime soon you can make your way back to us. Let us know if you need help getting here. We won't, you won't hear us say, we can't do that. For those of you who watch our services online, we know that you use our website. For those of you who listen on the radio or are here today, we hope you also use our website. It's wonderful, full of information, daily devotion, spiritual influence, and guidance. You can see many of the good things that are happening and then join in. Even our stewardship campaign progress can be seen there. Take a look, think about pledging, Pray about pledging, then pledge. We thank all of you who work on our website and hope every parishioner sees its value and makes it a part of their daily practice. Don't be like me and say, I can't do that. I promise to try something new each week, and this week's You Can Always Do More Than You Think piece is focusing on sponsoring flowers, radio, or treats. Handouts are available in the narthex like they were last week. Um, but you're going to have to move away from the cookie table and come over to the other side of the room to get a handout. 
uh, that reminds me, you online and viewers and the radio listeners are missing out on the cookie table too. We filled our greeters slots last week. Thank you everyone who volunteered. And our branch group number eight will sponsor coffee and tea for the remainder, remaining weeks this year. So now on to flowers, radio, and treats. I've been told that these spots are the most popular to sponsor, especially toward the end of the year. Looking online, I can see that's true because they are almost full. This, um, this is your last chance this year to remember a special person, time, or life event through sponsoring or sponsorship. So make your decision and sign up online or in the hallway or come and see me. Maybe you can drop off a suggestion or question while you are signing up or picking up a handout. I know you can do that. Finally, when spending time in the office, I am grateful when I see so many of you coming in to give in so many ways. You don't say, I can't do that. It's very inspiring. Thank you for all you do. I do want a side note. I guess people didn't see that we were going to bring coin today, uh, kind of attached to the changing of the time, bring your change. So if you want to bring it next week, we'll gladly accept that. And I'm sorry to say that um, I was going to in introduce Jeff um, Benchley, but they had to delay the skit. So hopefully we can do that next week too. Thank you. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The Lord knows what we need, even before we need it. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gently and lowly in the heart, and you will find rest for your souls. We have nothing to fear, for God is with us always. He will never leave us or forsake us. Trust in the Lord. Please join together in singing hymn 715 in the red hymnal in the pocket in front of you. Rejoice, the Lord is King. Please be seated. Please join me in the opening prayer in the parts that are in dark font. God of grace, 
You have called us to give ourselves completely to you, yet we often hold back part for worldly pursuits. You have given us the gift of time. You give us time to serve, time to learn, time to grow, time to share. We spend our time serving self. You provide us with opportunity to serve in numerous ways using the talents and abilities we have been given. We tend to hide our gifts. You have provided even the least among us with more financial resources than most of the world. We resist sharing because of fear of the future. Lord, help us to be generous people. Help us to let go of what we think satisfies and reach out in faith to the one who is everything. In your name we pray. Amen. Please hear these words of assurance. The Lord understands our fears, but he also knows our heart. He will provide. We have his assurance. We have his love. You know, I try to come up with something catchy and cool and creative every time for the offertory. And I came across something a couple months ago that I thought was perfect for the stewardship campaign. I said it last week, I'm going to say it again, and you're going to hear it next week. Because I think it's that important. Several years ago, I think in 20, 2019, the stewardship campaign, which would have been for 2020, I, Chris and I took a leap of faith. And when the pandemic hit, I received a phone call, are you sure? Under the circumstances, are you sure? And I said, yes, I'm even more sure. I've never been more sure than I have been ever. I'm more sure now than I was before. This year, we will also be taking another leap of faith. And I've never been more sure of it again as I am right now, and here's why. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this way, says the Almighty Lord, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Giving is not easy, because we worry that we won't have enough. We want to hold on to our money for what is tangible in order to be prepared for what we know we need, or more importantly, what may occur. You know, the what ifs, because that is our reality. An offering can be difficult because while we understand the concept of returning a portion of our blessings to God, it is still an intangible notion. But the verse in Malachi speaks truth. So go ahead, I'm challenging you. Test God. He is inviting you to do so. Take a leap of faith and see what happens. Here at First Church, you can give online. You can mail your offering into the church. The bulletin also shows you several ways that you can give, or you can place it in the church offering. As always, we are grateful for what you have done and continue to do. So on that note, would the ushers please come forward to collect the offering.
gracious and generous Heavenly Father, you have entrusted us with so many gifts that are more important than worldly possessions. You have called us to be stewards of all that you have created. We strive to fulfill your call to be generous stewards by openly sharing the bounty you have placed under our care. We offer these gifts as a visible demonstration of our commitment to your work in this world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated. Our scripture reading today comes from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 12. I'll be reading from the Message Bible. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Run to God. Run from evil. Your body will glow with health. Your, bo your very bones will vibrate with life. Honor God with everything you own. Give him the first and the best. Your barns will burst. Your wine vats will brim over. But don't, dear friend, resent God's discipline. Don't sulk under his loving correction. It's the child he loves that God corrects. A father's delight is behind all this. The reading of the word. Our, I'll move into our joys and concerns, and this is just a reminder that if you have joys and concerns, you can write them on the little note in the bulletins, or you can call them or email them to the office so we can get them as well. Um, we pray for Anna, who's still at home recovering, and we pray for Larry, who's also recovering at home. May God be present within them during this time, and for all of those who need healing. We pray for the safety of those who are still rebuilding after Hurricane Ian. Um, one of the things that I want to remember is hunting season is starting here soon in Illinois, but it has started back home in North Dakota, and so we want to remember all those who will be out hunting for their safety. Um, some of the other concerns that we have is Phyllis Whitliff is recovering at home. Um, Diana Groh is going through some more chemotherapy. Um, election season is coming, and so we pray for that. <laughs> we have new bishop. We have a new bishop of the United Methodist um, Conference, Dan Sherwin. Uh, his um, position will start um, January 1st. Um, for some of our praises, we lift up the joy of healing. Glenn uh, had some blood tests done, and the numbers came back looking good, so we pray for the healing there. Um, we are joyful that Kat is here for, you know, testing with the choir, so Hopefully, if all goes well, a choir director will happen soon. Um, another joy is Veterans Day is this coming Friday. So we remember and give thanks to those who are serving and who have served. Um, another joy is that there are some noteworthy bishops who have been elected at this, um, this year's um, jurisdictional conference. Um, our first Native American bishop has been elected. The first um, woman elected to the South Central jurisdiction, um, first Filipino bishop, a first Hispanic bishop in the Northeastern jurisdiction, our first openly gay black male bishop has been elected, and the third Hispanic woman bishop has been elected. So just a lot of, lot of progress has been going on, and so we're very thankful and joyful for all of those things that have been happening. So please join me in prayer. Lord, we are a people who want instant answers to all our questions. We want to know how everything is going to work out throughout all of our lives. So we pose questions in which we do not necessarily seek answers, but rather entrap you into giving us what we want. Help us to understand the broader picture, the scope of your faithfulness and love for us. Remind us of all the times when you have listed, lifted us and brought us to new opportunities for learning and growing. Let us place our trust in you totally without reservation, for you are indeed faithful and just. As we have brought our prayers before you for our loved ones and for situations in the world in which pain and anger dominate, let us place our trust in your response and your healing love. Give us courage that our faith will be witness to those who struggle, that our lives will bear the love that you have lavished on us. And we ask for these things in Jesus' name. And let us join in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mindy. We're going to do something a little different with regard to how the sermon text is read because it's so long. I want to invite you to read that at your leisure, but I am going to take um, a theme, uh, uh, one verse to lift up for our time together this morning. Our whole text is around 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 through 22. Really, you should read the whole chapter, but I want to lift up specifically 2 Chronicles 20, in verse 12, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. I want to share with you for a few minutes from the topic, from the title, Reveal Through Prayer. Reveal Through Prayer. Won't you pray with me? God, we thank you so much for all that our eyes have already seen and heard. But God, we know that there is so much more that you have for us. So much more of yourself that you want to give to us, so much more that you want to reveal to us. So God, I pray this morning that you would open our ears to hear, that you would give us eyes to see, that you would break up the stoniness of our hearts. God, I pray that you would embolden us, God, to step out, to trust you, God, to really become the people that you already say that we
that sometimes the words don't come or you don't know what to say or how to pray. I don't simply um, I'm saying God, but prayer is so much more than it. You know, many of us miss the fact that there, a, there are ways to pray that bring about God's power in ways we have never been Now, I'm telling you, we go into the prosperity side of things. Nah, no, I didn't move that way. I'm telling you, our Bible says two things prayer, love and the last Old Testament. Love and the last Old Testament. Love and the last Old Testament. God has grace and mercy. Still loves us, still loves us, still wants to bring us home. The other part is that it is a testament. It is a testament about how we understand how we are three things. And there's something about the special uh, prayer. When we pray God's way, don't believe me, then you ought to head over to Matthew 17 and check out what disciples Jesus for. This is each chapter of Jesus. You don't have to go to Jesus. The thing that the disciples had Jesus was to teach us how to pray. There's something different when you pray. A way to have to say God that we don't have to see the pulse of it. In Mark 9, the Bible says, if there are remembrance, the answer is going to be that we can't have to say that Jesus won't do that. Jesus says, I'm going to keep asking. Like, do I need to listen in prayer? Why? Because prayer is the most important thing that we do. Prayer is what teaches us how to live together with our faith. How to trust God in our own heart and lean on our own spirit. Say that we should need our spirit. God does not tear those who take us up. We are not holy. We need God. We need our own God too. We're supposed to watch the Everywhere we go, we are to be people of faith and not by sight. So by now, you all should be saying to yourselves, now, Pastor, we've been coming to this church for a long time. We've been praying for quite some time. Please tell us how we are missing it. Well, in 2017, the Barna Group did a study. It was quite, it, it was talk, it talks about how Americans pray. And it said, even though 79% of us pray, the content of those prayers can be defined by bless me and my four and, and no more. 62% were around gratitude and thanksgiving, maybe around the community, but everything was about ourselves. What I need, my health, my safety, it was bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. Beloved, that's not the, what prayer is for. Prayer is for you and I to engage with God so that we understand who he is and who we are in light of God and what God wants us to do. In all of these prayers that they studied, they found out that very few of us listen for God. Very few of us ask God for anything. We often give God instructions. We have a way that we want God to bless us. We want some people that God wants to bless us through, but God is God and we are not. Often prayer sounds more, um, Barna found out, prayer sounds more like, God, what can you do or what have you done for me lately versus, God, what can I do for you for what you've already done for me? Beloved, in Jeremiah 33 and 3, we are told by God, it is a promise. Call unto me and ask me, and I will tell you things that, that you don't know anything about. When you and I go to God first, as Joyce Meyer would say, when we go to the throne rather than the phone first, God promises to answer us. But so few of us do that. So I thought this morning that I would, I, I can't even say that I thought, the idea came, from me, came to me about using 2 Chronicles chapter 20 as a model way to, to pray, especially when we're in trouble. 2 Chronicles 20 is about a king by the name of Jehoshaphat. Can I call him Jay? Is that all right? Can I give you the LaBoy remix? I'll just call him Jay. Here's Jay's problem. Jay has three situations. He has three armies coming towards him. Any one of them is big enough to knock him and the people out, to utterly destroy them. Any one of them is able to do that. But there are now three people, three massive armies that are, co are coming against him. So what does Jay do? Does he call his military advisors? Does he call his friends to find out where he can go for help? Nope. See, he learned that lesson back in 2 Chronicles chapter 17. He tried to make alliance with some people that he, that, and before he even talked to God about it. He went his own way and he almost ended up dead. Beloved, I just stopped by to warn some of you that there are dangers in not praying first before we ask God. So what does Jay do in 2 Chronicles chapter 20? Jay has learned his lesson and so what he does is he pulls all the people together and says, we need to fast. Not only do we need to fast, we need to come together and be united in one cause to say, Lord, we do not know what to do. Can I give you the, the LaBoy translation for that? This is what he said, help! <laughs> not Father, thou art the magnificent, help! 
Is there anybody in the room that has some situations that you don't know what to do and you might have to holler out, help? And this is the way that Jay prayed, and I'm thinking that it might give us a lesson this morning. The first thing that he does is he doesn't say, uh, Lord, now let me tell you all about what's got to happen, and we need help, and blah, blah, blah. He doesn't say any of that. He begins to magnify God. He says, oh, God, aren't you the God of our ancestors? Are you not the God of heaven and ruler above all the kingdoms above? Don't you hold all power and might in your fist? And isn't it true that no one stands a chance against you? Well, why in the world he would do that? Because, beloved, whatever we magnify grows, and you and I need to let our problems understand that nothing is bigger than our God. Jay starts off by saying, God, isn't this who you are? And then he reminds God, God, not only is this who you are, didn't you say that we are in relationship? Ain't we your friend? Didn't you tell us, God? This is how you would be. Did you not do these things for us in the past? Did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land? Did you not build us a sanctuary? Did you not say that when we are in trouble, when the very worst happens, whether war or flood or disease or famine, that we are to take our place in your temple and pray about our pain and our trouble because we know that you listen and you give the victory. Beloved, when we come to church on Sundays, it's not about coming to get just a good message, something that makes us warm and fuzzy. It is to come to learn, to understand about our relationship with God and to live in it. Jay says, look, God, I know that you are big and miraculous and all of that, but we have some history, God. We have a relationship, God, and this time I'm in trouble again. And so, God, I know I called you in the past. I know that this may not be big to anybody else, but this is big to us. God, please. Please remember who I am to you. And after they have acknowledged who God is, after they have reminded themselves and God of the history that they have together, now they ask God for help. And they don't say, God, kill my enemies. God, destroy them. They don't say any of that. They stand before God with these words. Lord, we are helpless I don't know about you, I don't like saying I'm helpless. Anybody else in the room don't like being vulnerable? I don't like saying to God, I am not big enough to fix it. My ego is too big for that. I'm I'm too prideful. I don't like saying that. But here, beloved, I came to tell you the only way that God works is that when we acknowledge that he's God and we are not, They say to God after they have acknowledged how big their God is and after they have said these are the promises that we have and this is the history that we have with you, then they ask God, they say to God, Lord, we are powerless to help. And our eyes are not on our friends. Our eyes are not on our resources. Our eyes are not on figuring out who can help us. God, our eyes are on you. You. You, because the kind of trouble we are in, only you can fix it. And then they wait for an answer. Now, I don't know about you, but I am learning to listen in prayer. I remember one time I sat before God and I had a whole list of things that whole day. Here is my plan for the day. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I need you to help me here and bless me here and blah, blah, blah. And I heard a still small voice that said, Felicia, this is not a conference call. Oh, all right, God, here is the list on my agenda today. What's your agenda today? See, beloved, God doesn't do things the way that we do things. God does things the way that he wants to do things. And so as they stop to listen in prayer, a kid stands up. The least likely person stands up and says, I want you to know that these are the words that come from God. First of all, don't be afraid or discouraged. This battle is not about you. This battle belongs to God. And here's what I want you to do. This is crazy to me. As Jay and them are preparing for the fight, as they're preparing to hear what God would say, he said, this this is what I want you to do. I don't want you to sit back and be afraid. I want you to march out towards the enemy and don't send your military out first. I want you to send your praises out first. Huh? Can can you imagine the, the U.S. going into war and put the praise team in front, the band? That's what the Lord told 
I want you to put the praise team in front. And as they are singing and you are making your way, not only that, I want, before you do anything, and while they're praising people, then I want you to stop and watch and see what I'm going to do. Uh, what? I want to thank you. I want you to thank me ahead of time for the victory. You've been saying inside here that I am all of that, that I'm the God of the universe, that I'm the God that takes care of you, that we are in relationship. I need your enemies. I need the people around you to see that I am who you say that I am. And so as you go to meet the enemy, I want you to tell people all the way about this is who I am. And now Jay and his friends have a choice. They can do it their way. They can do it by what seems common sense or what seems logical, put the military out first and maybe have the band behind. Or they can do it God's way. They can praise God ahead of time for the victory. Last week, I tried to explain in the, in the Bible study lesson that when we trust people, when we ask someone to do something and we trust them, we usually say thank you to them up front because we know that they're going to keep their word. Beloved, you and I are supposed to be like that when we rise up from prayer. God, here's our relationship. Here's how big you are. I know I, we, that I can do nothing about this, but I know that you can. And God, because I know that you can handle this and I can't, I'm going to rest in that. I'm going to listen for what you want me to do. And then I'm going to sit back and praise you anyhow. Can I give you a little bit of my own testimony. Two years ago when I had COVID and I was in the hospital and I didn't know what was going to happen, I asked God, what is this about? I wanted to know if I was going to die. And I felt like the Lord said, this isn't unto death. And then barely able to catch my breath, barely able to breathe, knowing that I was on my way to the hospital and, not, and, and, and only having God's word that I would be okay. I used to whisper because that was all I could get out. Devil, you better run now before my dad finds out what you did to me and he's gonna get you. He's gonna get you real good. You better watch yourself cause my father's gonna get you for messing with me. Can you imagine? I can barely breathe. I'm sick as a dog. Devil, keep messing with me. My daddy's gonna get you real good. Beloved, you, the, the reason why folks ain't coming to church, don't believe, what we say is because they haven't seen us display that we are God's people who believe that God can and will work miracles, signs, and wonders, and that our Father will take care of us. And even if he does not, that we will stand on his word and his promises. Did you catch the sequence of the prayer? Jay praised God for who God is. He reminded God of the relationship and the history that they had together. He claimed the promises that applied to his situation. He stated the facts about the trouble and he acknowledged their vulnerability. And their only way of knowing what to do was to listen for God and then he was on the lookout for the answer. Finally, Jay praised God in advance for the victory. Beloved, every time we come to the table, this is not a spiritual vitamin. We come to the table to remind ourselves of who God is. We come to remind ourselves that on the night in which he was betrayed, he gave himself for us and he claimed the victory three days later. We come to the table and join the church triumphant in proclaiming who Christ is. And then we eat of the bread and the wine as a symbol, as a sign to everyone and everything in heaven and on earth. Our God reigns and we will be filled with his spirit and God will have his way in us and in this world. Beloved, the times we face are too treacherous for us to try to do it on our own. If we are going to be the people that God needs us to be and wants us to be, we have to be people who sit in the position of praise and sit in the position of God, we are helpless and yet we don't know what to do. And would you like to know what happens at the end of Jay's story? The scripture tells us that as they begin to march out and the praisers begin to sing, that at that moment, God sets an ambush and the armies start to fight themselves. And when the people get there to the battle, 
What they found is the enemy is dead and there's enough loot and stuff left over that it takes them three days to carry back the blessing of the thing that was sent to destroy them. And not only that, because the people around them heard them praising about how God would deliver them. They had a lot of rest because folks decided that they didn't want to fool with them. Beloved, our God is strong and powerful and mighty and loves us immeasurably. And our God will do what he says he will do. We have a, a responsibility too. We've got to do it his way. And when we do so, there is great blessing, great healing, and great deliverance. And other people will be one to the cause of Christ when we allow God to reveal in us and through us by prayer. Amen? Amen. Beloved, every battle is not meant to destroy us. Every, most battles are meant to be a, a setup. Not about proving who we are, but proving who God is. So as we come to the table this morning, I invite you to remember who God is and who you are as God's beloved child and know that God not only has your back, but that God has your victory in hand. Amen? I want to invite you to gather your elements for communion, and if you will prepare to join Rydell and I for our service. The, the order of service is in your bulletin and in on the screen. Come to this table with thankful hearts. Why we give thanks, thanks at this, at this table. table? We give thanks because God has invited us here. All God's children are invited to the Lord's Supper. We come humbly to the table, knowing that we have not earned our way here, but are invited, guests at this feast of love. Together, why, why do, do we, we eat, eat at, at this, this table? table? We eat at this table to remember that on the night before Jesus died, he ate with his friends. Jesus took the loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. Let's pray. God of grace, give us repent, forgiving, and clean hearts. With thanksgiving, we come to your table. Send your spirit upon us so that all who eat and drink in this room and around the world are one body, one holy people, giving thanks to you in an endless song of praise. Thanks, thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ who, who gave, gave your, your life freely for our salvation. salvation. We take the cup with thankful hearts. Why, Why do we, we take, take the, the cup, cup at this, this table? table? We drink because that same night Jesus also took a cup, and after giving thanks, he passed it to his friends, saying, Drink this cup. This cup poured out for you is the promise of God. Whenever you drink it, remember me. Thanks, thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, who gave your life freely for our salvation. Our presence at this communion table is a sign. Here we are. No, here we remember the gift that is Jesus the gift of his birth, life, and death on the cross. At this table, we celebrate Jesus' resurrection, and we remember that we are waiting to see Jesus again. Let us pray together. Thank you for inviting us to this banquet. Help us to remember the gift we have received and to live as brothers and sisters, members of one family. All praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you would take your elements in your hand, if you don't have them, will you please raise your hands and we'll make sure that the ushers give you one. And if you will open up the bread. <laughs> Next month we'll be back to our regular communion service. <laughs> Let's take the bread now and eat this together.
What can wash away all of our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Won't you take the cup? Drink, let's drink together. Arise, my father's children, in the newness of life. Walk powerfully and boldly in the presence of God, shouting his victories even before we can see the end of the battle. Our God is good and loves us more than we can imagine and knows exactly what we need, especially when we are willing to say we are helpless and to look to him for what to do. You will rise as you are able and join us in our closing hymn. Every time I feel the spirit in the red hymnal and on screen, United Methodist Hymnal 404. Please receive the benediction. Generous, almighty God, teach us how to pray, how to live into your love. Give us time this week so that we can pray or talk with you. Give us time to sit and listen for the answer. So this week, pray, pray to our all-powerful God. Ask for help when you need it. Go this week in God's peace, amen. You may be seated.